Welcome back everyone. Um, in our last video, we, we delve into the realm of the weak and weak star topologies and unveil some of their intriguing properties. So, but today uh, we are about to embark on something truly remarkable, right? So we are uh, we are taking a deep dive into our first compactness result hidden under the Banakalao Glow um, Bubaki theorem. Um, this theorem actually stands as one of the cornerstones of functional analysis with um, really, really far-reaching implications. And its elegant proof and profound consequences um, have mesmerized mathematicians across generation. So this was actually um, one of the main reasons why um, I've decided to, to dedicate um, this entire video to, to explore it thoroughly. So um, in this video, we, I mean, we will not just scratch the surface of the theorem, right? But together, we will try to, I mean, to scrutinize its proof step by step. So let's start by um, by stating the, the theorem itself, right? So um, we, I mean, theorem 3.16, right? In continuation with our last lecture, 3.16. So this is the Banakala Oglu and Bubaki theorem. So the statement is that um, the closed unit ball um, in the dual space is actually um, weak star compact. I mean, compact in the weak star topology. So the close unit ball. So we call it um, B E star, right? Which is defined as being the set of linear functionals, linear bounded functionals, such that the operator norm is less or equal than one. Okay, so this is compact. in the weak star topology sigma e star e so um, let's have a remark first I think it is actually important to point this out So I mean compactness of the I mean of the closed unit ball is actually the the most essential property of fixed star topology. So compactness of oops it was too big of B e star this is the closed unit ball. I mean is Put it in color is the most important or the most essential, the most essential property of weak star topology. So, um, I mean, if you were actually to, to, to forget everything else from this lecture series, I highly implore you to, to, to actually, to, I mean, to remember this one fundamental truth, right? Uh, which is the, the, the Banakara Oglu uh, Bubaki Chon. So, um, proof, let's have a look at the proof. So we actually want to show that the um, the closed unit wall in the dual space is actually compact. So the traditional uh, method to prove compactness would be to um, to consider open covers right uh, of the closed unit ball and try to extract um, a finite sub cover. But this approach can be um, quite laborious, I would say. Right. So instead, what we do is that. Um, we will explore a more um, elegant perspective. So we will um, try to, I mean, we show that the closed unit ball and um, the dual space is actually homeomorphic to, to a compact set. And then um, 
we are done right so i mean remember that i mean being homeomorphic i mean means that i mean the two sets share the um um how would i say that i mean i mean the two sets share the same topological properties and compactness is actually i mean it's obviously a topological property so um as a matter of uh, of um simplicity um let me just write our goal so the goal for the proof so goal so we want to show that the closed unit ball b star right is homeomorphic as i said homeomorphic to a compact set So basically this means for the proof that put it in another color. So this means we have to construct we have to construct the homeomorphism. Right? As well as um, the corresponding compact set. Corresponding compact set. So I think um, now we are all on the same line, right? So um, we start the proof directly. So consider the Cartesian product. I mean the proof is actually um, is constructive, right? So consider the Cartesian product. Say um, let's call it Y, right? Which is equal to R E, right? Which is nothing else as um, than. I mean this is just. Um, I mean basically Y consists of all maps from from E into R. So those are maps say um, W. I define from E into R. So we denote by so we denote um, elements of Y by W right? equal to WX x running through e right with of course wx being an element of of r okay so so we have the space y so what we do next is that we equip y with With the standard product topology. So I will recall what the standard product topology is. So this means, let me put it. So this means, I mean, the standard product topology is actually the smallest topology for which projection are actually continuous, right? So this is the smallest topology. Um, on y um, such that um, the collection of maps um, say w associate um, wx in r is continuous Continuous for for every x in the, in e. So so and of and of course I mean this is actually the same topology as um, of point wise convergence. So let me just write it. So this is 
mean the same as the topology of um, point-wise um, convergence. So this means, I mean, point-wise convergence means, I mean, if you have a sequence y n of element of y, um, w n of element of y, that converges to w, right? So if in a sequence um, w n of element of y converges to w, if for every x in E, um, W n of x converges to to W of x. Okay, good. So we have um, the set Y, which is the Cartesian product, equipped with the standard um, product topology. So um, um, it is actually important to note that um, since E star, so since the dual space, right? Consists of consists of very special um, maps from E into R. I mean, namely um, continuous linear maps, right? Namely, um, the continuous. The continuous linear maps. Um, we may always, I mean, not always, I mean, we may consider, I mean, we can consider. So we may consider um, the dual space as a subset of, of Y. So more precisely, what do I mean by so more precisely um, um, let and here comes the construction of our homeomorphism so let um, psi defined from e star to y right be the canonical embedding be the canonical embedding from the dual space to y right defined by um, phi of f right is equal to I mean, define phi f to be phi f, say, index with x, right? x running through through a. Also, this is defined to be f of x, the sequence of f of x, x moving, x running through through a. Okay, good. So, um, clearly, I mean, Clearly, phi is continuous, right? From the dual space into y, right? So to see that, um, um, just use, I mean, just use um, proposition 3.2, I think so. Proposition 3.2. I put the link right, at the upper upper right corner of the string. So for your reference, so use proposition 3.2. Let me highlight that. Right. Um, proposition 3.2. Right. Proposition 3.2. Right. And also note that for I mean for 
h fix x in e right the map which maps element of the jewel space to um, to phi of phi of f x right which is much less than f of x by definition right is continuous okay so phi is continuous so um also i mean the inverse is also I mean, let me just write it since because we need to prove that the phi that we constructed is actually a homeomorphism so since since the inverse um phi minus one right defined from the image space into e star is given by um say um let me put it here is given by those are, I mean maps element of the image space to element into the dual space so this is those are the map which had x in, in e associate um, phi minus one w of x right so which is defined to be say um, wx so there's no space anymore so maybe i just let me just drag it to the left to create space okay so this is defined to be wx so since the inverse is actually given by this right the inverse of course actually from the image space to i mean to 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 e star so one sees that um that the inverse right define on the image space and that would it wouldn't fit so let me write when it says that the inverse phi minus one right? um, define from the image space into a star I mean it's also continuous it's also continuous right whenever um, y is in the with the product topology so well indeed um, well this is still an application of proposition 3.2 so um, let me just write it kind of a short proof so indeed um, using proposition 3.2 again right i strongly invite you to watch the 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 video on the i think that was actually on the on the courses topology right yeah so um using proposition 3.2 again um i mean to see that the inverse is continuous i mean it is enough um to check that um for each fix um x and e right um the map W associate um, phi minus one of W 
at x, which is equal to wx. This is how we define it. It's continuous. Right? Of course, continuous on the image space, which is obviously a subset of y. Right? And this is, I mean, this is actually the case because y is endowed with the, with, uh, um, I mean, it's actually the case because y is actually endowed with the product topology. So, um, how would I write it down? Mm. <laughs> so, let me just, which is, which is obvious since um, y is is endo um, with the product topology remember what I said I mean the product topology is actually the smallest the smallest topology for which projections are I mean are continuous so So if you have, um, I mean, you say WN is actually a sequence that converges to, to W in Y, right? Then, I mean, you saw that the product topology was actually the same as the, um, the topology of point wise, I mean, the point wise convergence topology. So this is then wn of x goes to w of x and this for every x in e right so you obviously get um phi minus one of wn of x which converges to to wx right which is nothing else as nothing else than same minus one of w at x. So the inverse is actually um, continuous um, from the image space to to star. So this was, I mean, this was kind of, um, I mean, a short proof of of our claim, right? So I mean, you kind of proof here, kind of um, how would I, I mean, from analysis one, I think. This is called kind of um, sequential continuity, right? When you prove that I mean, you have a sequence um, W n that converges to to W in Y, then um, phi minus one of W n also converges to to I mean to phi minus one of W, and then converges I mean in W is the same as the pointwise convergence. Okay, so upshot. Um, Upshot phi is phi is a homeomorphism right from the dual space onto the image space. Right, so where, um, like it here, where the dual space is obviously endowed with the weak star topology, right, and the Cartesian product W, right, is given the product topology. Good. So we have um, finally um, our homeomorphism, right? So now we need to kind of construct now the, I mean, our compact set. Okay, good. So for that, um, on the other hand, um, I think it is clear. We just write it like this, and then we give you kind of a short proof. It's clear that. 
um, the image of the closed unit ball right through our homeomorphism is equal to the set k right so maybe let me um, put it in color right so good so where this set k is defined to be where k is obviously a subset of y right is given is given by um, k is a set of points in w in in y sorry such that so maybe here I do such that the absolute value of wx right is less or equal um, the norm of x in e right this should hold for every x in e of course and w is is linear I mean in the sense that um, w of x plus y is equal to w of x plus w of y right and w of um, of lambda x is equal to lambda times w of x and of course this should hold for every x let me just write lambda for every lambda in r for every x and y in e okay good so this is how the set e and um, the set k is defined so well how do we see that um, the image of the closed unit ball um, to um, psi equals um, the set k so let me just put it in bracket so um, indeed um, say let f be an element of the closed unit ball right so we have um, so we have what we have um, psi of f equals um, this is by definition right f of x x running through e right which is obviously an element of y right and phi of f um, is linear means obviously it's linear right in the sense that i mean in the sense that um psi of f at x plus y right this is equal to um by definition f of x plus y but f is actually linear so this is f of x plus uh, plus f of y but this is again by definition phi f psi f of x i mean i think so far i've been <laughs> mixing phi and psi so so this equals to um psi f x psi plus um, psi f y and then the same thing also i mean can also show that this of lambda x is equal to lambda right for every i mean for every of course for every lambda yeah, and for every x y d okay good so moreover we have i mean this is the last property we need to check moreover you have um, the absolute value of psi f x right which is equals to the absolute value of f of x right and this is obviously the psi equal than the norm of x in e right because remember f is actually in the, the closed unit ball right this means you will put the norm of this is less so equal than one okay good so we are done so we are sure that i mean um that um the image of the closed unit ball and um, through psi is equal to k so it remains to prove so to complete the proof let me write it in color so to complete
the proof um, we only uh, we only have to check that k is a compact subset of of y good okay so one thing you need to observe is that um, observe that um, one can write k as being the intersection of k1 and k2 where k1 is is defined to be the set of w in y such that um, the absolute value of wx is less or equal than the norm of x in e right for every x in e of course and k2 is is defined to be um a set of w in y such that w is linear okay so now um k1 can be um written as product of um, of compact interval so this means I mean see how k1 is defined like those are the w in y so that the absolute value is less or equal than the norm of x in e so we can rewrite k1 as being the product of this interval of minus norm of x in e norm of x in e right over x belong to e and this is obviously a subset of but this was defined to be y subset of y so um observe that i mean those are actually when I mean, this is a compact interval right compact by what you know the hind ball hind, um, by hind ball theorem right it is actually in close and bounded it's equivalent to compact right in, in R, of course, so this is behind body one. So, and again, um, by Tichonov, right? By Tichonov theorem, well, Tichonov theorem actually says that I mean, arbitrary product of arbitrary product of of compact spaces are compact so by teaching off uh, we can conclude that um, k1 is compact good so, on the other hand, K2, I mean, is a closed subset. I mean, it's closed. And why? How do we see that? Mm, indeed. Um, for each fix. Um, lambda in R and X Y in E, right? I mean the set 
that I mean that I define to be um, what I call a x y right x and y are fixed is a set of w in y such that w um, of x plus y um, let me write it probably down so, such that w of x plus y minus w of x right minus w y is equal to zero and the set b lambda put comma x right defined to be the set of w in y such that w of lambda x minus thing i'm writing too big so w of um, lambda x minus lambda wx is equal to zero so those sets are actually close right they are close in y um, since um, the maps which are w um, associate w of x plus y minus w of x minus w y and this map w of lambda x minus lambda w x so those map are continuous on y so and we may um, rewrite um, the set Kato. Nope, this is inequality as being, I mean, the intersection of the xy, right, or xy running through e, right? Just to avoid confusion, intersected with the intersection of the b lambda x, right? Lambda running through R and X running through through E. So you have um, arbitrary intersection of of closed set. So and therefore it is close. It's arbitrary intersection. Of closed sets. So K2 is close. So um, finally, one can conclude that. So finally, one can conclude that K is K is compact since um, so it's compact as intersection of a close. close set k2 and the compact set k1 right so you can I think you can um, probably do that as an exercise right you can try to prove that you should have um, enumerated so um, as an exercise um, prove that I mean, it's actually not difficult actually so both that um, I mean if you have a set A if A is close and B is compact right then the intersection of A and B is compact so you can try, you can try to prove this right it's not difficult Assume that A and B are maybe um, subset of a topological space. So, so you can try to prove this. No, it's not difficult actually. You can even use like, I mean, the traditional method, like take a, a an open cover and then you try to find a finite subcover. Okay, so hence um, the closed unit ball, right? B star, which is the pre-image right of 
of the set K is to say is compact, right? Compact in the your space with respect to the big star topology sigma e star e. So and then we are done. So the fourth I think was constructive but at the end uh, not that difficult right so I think the main goal was actually to I mean to the main probably um, difficulty I would say um, is actually to maybe construct the homeomorphism right and also the set K uh, yeah because it is not that obvious to, to see that um, the that um, the image of the closed unit ball via the homeomorphism is equal to to the set k with the set k being well um this constructed this way i mean a set of w in y such that um the absolute value of y of w of x is less or equal than the norm of x and w is linear so well that was it for the for the proof of the Banakalo glue theorem. So I hope you enjoy it and if you have any any questions or any comment please feel free to put it in the comment and uh, if you need help with anything um yeah you can also reach out to me via via email so thank you um once again and we see again each other in the next video.